Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about the properties that logs have. So just like we have properties for exponents or properties of algebra, there's properties for logarithms. And these properties are called, the, are called expanding and condensing properties. And the ultimate goal of this is these properties will probably help us solve equations later. So that's why we we're learning about these properties. So when we say expanding, this is a poor example of what we mean by expand. We're not just widening the same problem. We're going to be doing something where um, we're breaking something down so that it becomes longer. But we're it will be longer in the end, but it's going to look different. And so this is a bad example. So um, more funny situations of things that you should not do. So does this object continue to move after it comes to rest? No, there's an elephant in the way. These are not ways that we answer questions, right? So find X. Oh, well, there it is. Okay, so that's a smart aleck trying to answer this question. So think back to that expanding question. And this is what we don't want to do with expanding and condensing logs. We don't want to turn into smart alecks that are trying to figure out ways to answer the question that actually have none of the properties being used, okay? Okay, you probably have a foldable from me, and if not, then you should get one when you come back to class. And this is what the foldable looks like. So there's three major properties that we're going to talk about. The product property, the quotient property, and the power property. So the property for the product property says that we can break up a log that's getting multiplied. So if we have a log base, in this case it'd be log base 10 of a times b or of something times something we can break up that log into the log of the first thing plus the log of the second thing so the quotient property if we're dividing two numbers or two expressions in a log we can break it up into the log of the first thing or the numerator minus the log of the second thing in the denominator and the power property. If we have something getting raised to a power, so like the log, and this again would be base 10, of a raised to the b or to the b power, you can bring this out in front of the log, okay? So that's like a weird new property. The first two kind of look familiar from exponent properties, but this last one is a little different and we haven't learned that necessarily. So if we have something getting raised to a power, we can bring that power to the front of the log as a number that's getting multiplied to it. Okay, so let's open that product property flap for a second. And we have three problems that we're going to go through. So the first two want us to expand the log, and the last one wants us to condense the log. So what do I mean when I say expand and condense? So on the front of that product property flap, we had um, an equation that says the log base of something, of something times something, we can break that up into the log the log of the first thing, so log base 3 of 5, plus the log base 3 of the second thing, which is x. This would be expanding, because this is like the shorter form of how to write it, and this is the longer form and how to write it. So let's try the next one. So we have 6 times y times x, or sorry, excuse me, 6 times x times y. So we have log base 10 of 6 plus log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of y. So we had three things getting multiplied, so we had to expand it into three separate logs getting added together. Okay, now we want to condense the log, so we're going the other direction. So we want to write it as one log, condensed into one log. So it's going to be log base 3, and now it's going to be all the inside numbers getting multiplied. So it's going to be 2 times 11 times 7. And that is, we can simplify that number because we know 2 times 11 times 7 is, if we push that in our calculator, 154. So our final answer is log base 3 of 154. 
Okay, moving on to the quotient properties. So if you open that quotient flap, so the first one we want to expand and the second two we want to condense. So remember the property on the front. If I have a log and in this case it's base 10 and if we're dividing, I'm going to turn it into subtracting. So it's going to be log base 10 of 6 minus log base 10 of x. It's always going to be the numerator minus the denominator. Okay? And so now when we condense, we're going the opposite direction. Now we have log 2 minus log 8, so that's going to be log, and that's base 10. If it's not written, it's a common base of 10. And now we're writing it as a fraction, so it's going to be 2 divided by 8. And we can simplify 2 divided by 8 to 1 fourth, so that becomes log base 10 of 1 fourth. And then we'll do the same thing for the last one. So log base 4 of 3 minus log base 4 of 8. We're going to condense that into one log of base 4 of 3 divided by 8. Hopefully these properties aren't too bad. Okay, so now we're going to use the power property and we may even use some of our other properties that we've already talked about. So let's look at this first one. So we're going to expand it, which means that we're going to have more than one log um, or we're going to make it bigger okay so before I can do that I notice that I have a exponent and I notice I have a multiplication sign well if I just would have if you ignore the log for a second log base 4 and if you just had a times b squared we just know from regular um, power properties that it would be a squared times b squared and so we can distribute that two as a power to both a and b. So that's going to help us when it comes to um, expanding this guy. So now we have the log base four of a squared times b squared. And so now we know that we can break it up into plus because it's a product. So log base four of a squared plus log base four of b squared and we're still not done because we haven't applied the power property yet the power property is taking this power and moving it to the front so it's taking this power and moving it to the front so that's going to be 2 times log base 4 of a plus 2 times log base 4 of b and that is your final 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 answer okay log base 5 so the first thing we got to take care of is um, breaking up that product into um, and adding two logs. So we have log base 5 of the square root of 7 plus log base 5 of x. Well, um, you would think that that is all you could do, but the square root of 7 can be rewritten to have a power that's a fraction. We can rewrite the square root of 7 as 7 to the 1 half plus log base 5 of x. So when you see a square root or a radical when you're expanding or condensing logs, that usually means you're going to get this fractional exponent, okay? And then you're going to have to use the power property by moving that one half in front of the log. So now we have one half times log base 5 of 7 plus log base 5 of x. So that is your final, 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 final answer. Okay, so thinking about that um, fractional power exponent and roots and radicals. So now we have to condense one third log six. Well, some of you may think that it's already condensed, but if we, you have to get used to the power property. If you see a number out in front of a log, that means that when you condense, you're going to have to bring it up to the power. So it's the reverse of what we just did in the first two. So we're going to have to rewrite this as log. And if you want, you can say base 10 of 6. And that's getting raised to the one third power. OK, so you have to get used to these coefficients that are in front are going to change into exponents when you condense logs. OK, and you can leave your answer like this or you could rewrite it as log base 10 of the third root of 6. Either way, it's the same thing. 6 to the 1 third or the cubed root of 6 is the same thing. So I will accept either answer.
Okay, there's two examples in your foldable that are using multiple different properties for expanding and condensing. So I want you guys to try these on your own and then we'll check them when we come back to class. And then of course, if you have any questions as we went through this foldable, or if you have questions on these two examples, please feel free to ask me when you get back to class, okay? And just a quick reason why are we doing this? What is the point of these properties? Because in the future, when you come back to class, we're gonna be solving equations like this. And in order to get those into one log and convert it to an exponential equation and solve, we're gonna to have to use those properties. So in a nutshell, this video was to prep us for helping us to solve log equations that are more complicated, okay? So I want to thank you all for taking such good notes, and I'll see you soon.